So let's really think about the intelligence revolution. You know, it was 25 years ago, if you can believe this, quarter of a century ago, that a computer beat Garry Kasparov at chess. Now that was really just brute strength what if analysis with computing. It was 10 years ago that IBM Watson won Jeopardy. Uh, and that was really amazing. Um, if, you, if, if you think about Jeopardy, that's, that's a really obscure natural language, uh, abstract contextualization game. Uh, it's really tough. And at the time that IBM Watson won Jeopardy, it was not connected to the internet, but it was the size of about a bedroom. Now, now Watson uh, is the size uh, of a big pizza box. So it's amazing how technology moves on. And it was about five years ago that Google's DeepMind uh, AlphaGo beat Lisa Dahl. Now, Lisa Dahl was the 18 times world champion at Go. Uh, and Go is an amazing game. We'll actually talk about that, but there's more potential options in the game of Go than there are atoms in the universe. Can you believe that? I can't even get my mind around that. And there's a thing called move 37 in one of the games where AlphaGo made a move where there was only a one in 10,000 chance that a human would have done that move. It's, it's started to self-teach itself the game. Uh, and it's now completely, completely unbeatable. That game is two and a half thousand years old. It's amazing. And it was just about three years ago uh, that Google revealed Google Duplex uh, on stage. And it was breathtaking. Uh, and they showed uh, a recording of a live call of Google Duplex. So, so, so that's their voice AI. And you can pick any accent or nationality or gender that you want. And it was phoning up humans and making appointments in really tough, complex environments without any problems at all. Uh, it even has ums and ahs uh, in, the, in the way that it's speaking and pauses. Uh, it uses the local vernacular in, in, in the way that it speaks, but it passed the Turing test. The people on the other end of the phone had no idea. Uh, and that technology, for example, could be deployed as a, as a virtual sales assistant to call up and confirm meetings for you, for example. Um, but, but it was absolutely incredible. Now, interestingly, the technology went super quiet once they announced it. And there's been amazing things going on in the background that we don't know about. So again, are some roles immune? You know, if you think about the role of a fighter pilot, you know, I can't imagine anything more stressful, complex, you know, where you need split second human decision making, where you need creativity in the way that you fly in a dogfight. Now, I can't wait to see uh, Top Gun. Top Gun's going to be an incredible movie. Um, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the clips are just absolutely amazing. But the reality is uh, no human being can pull harder on that joystick than a bot humans pass out when there's a certain number of g-forces applied to their body and in a dogfight it's the aircraft's ability to turn harder and faster inside the other aircraft that gives it the chance to shoot it down let alone the concepts of swarm technology and being able to multitask dealing with incoming threats uh, at an insane level of complexity so you know it's really evolved now you may not know this but it was only about 18 months ago uh, DARPA, which is uh, it's an acronym for the US, uh, the, the American spook agency that develops all its amazing cutting edge technology. Uh, DARPA did a simulated dogfight with their AI fighter pilot and an F-16, real human F-16 pilot. And the DARPA AI pilot won five zip. It was no contest. And that was despite the DARPA AI pilot being detuned to, to fly well within human limits. It was just incredible. Uh, if you want to, you, you know, you can have a look on, online uh, at Boston Dynamics. The Boston Dynamics computers are, are, are bots are absolutely amazing. Uh, they can do somersaults, they can run, they can jump up uh, on high, high boxes and walls. If you look at the way that Amazon works, if you have a look at Google Duplex, um, the, the, the way that that's operated. Uh, so we'll insert some of those videos in these recordings for you to have a look at. We think AI can help with this problem. So let's go back to this example. Let's say you want to ask Google to make you a haircut appointment on Tuesday between 10 and noon. What happens 
is the Google Assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Good happening, I'll see you. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. That was a real call you just heard. The amazing thing is the assistant can actually understand the nuances of conversation. We've been working on this technology for many years. It's called Google Duplex. It brings together all our investments over the years in natural language understanding, deep learning, text-to-speech. By the way, when we are done, the assistant can give you a confirmation notification saying your appointment has been taken care of. Let me give you another example. Let's say you want to call a restaurant, but maybe it's a small restaurant which is not easily available to book online. The call actually goes a bit differently than expected. So take a listen. See how may I hear you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people when? Um, Today, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we leave here for like upper like uh, five people. For few, four people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh no, it's not too busy. You you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Bye yeah. bye. It dealt with a whole lot of abstract conversation where the person didn't quite understand. Uh, it had no, no issue at all. Uh, this is a screenshot of the example with, with AlphaGo. Uh, again, a game that's 250 years old. More options than there are atoms in the universe uh, where it self-taught itself. Go is the world's oldest continuously played board game. It is one of the simplest and also most abstract. Beating a professional player at Go is a long-standing challenge of artificial intelligence. Everything we've ever tried in AI just falls over when you try the game of Go. The number of possible configurations of the board is more than the number of atoms in the universe. AlphaGo found a way to learn how to play Go. So far, AlphaGo has beaten every challenge we've given it, but we won't know its true strength until we play somebody who is at the top of the world, like Lisa Dong. A match like no other is about to get underway in South Korea. They said all is to go what Roger Federer is to tennis. Just the very thought of a machine playing a human is inherently intriguing. The place is a madhouse. Welcome to the Deep Mind Challenge. The whole world is watching. Can Lee Sedol find AlphaGo's weakness? Ooh. Whoa. Oh, is there, in fact, a weakness? The game kind of turned on its axis. Oh, look at his face. That is not a confident face. It's developing into a very, very dangerous fight. Ooh, hold the phone. Lee has left the room. In the end, it is about pride. I think there's something went wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's made a mistake. He's got to pronounce it. America. These ideas that are driving AlphaGo are going to drive our future. This is it, folks. Now, all of these technologies can be applied to what we do in selling, believe it or not. Um, this is a screenshot of the example of IBM Watson beating um, uh, ch previous champions 
um, you know, within this amazing, amazing game. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being here. What do you say we play Jeopardy? All right. Let's All right. get right into the Jeopardy round. These categories, a man, a plane, a canal, Erie, Chicks Dig Me, children's book titles, My Michelle, MC5, and finally, vocabulary. Ken, you're in the first position. Please make a selection. Oh, I've never said this on TV. Chicks Dig Me for 200, please, Jimmy. <laughs> Kathleen Kenyon's excavation of this city mentioned in Joshua showed the walls had been repaired 17 times. Watson. What is Jericho? Correct. 400, same category. This mystery author and her archaeologist hubby dug in hopes of finding the lost Syrian city of Urkesh. Watson? Who is Agatha Christie? Correct. Same category, 600. At the Old Divide Gorge in 1959, she and hubby Lewis found a 1.75 million year old Australopithecus boise-eyed skull. Watson? Who is Mary Leakey? You're right. 800, same category. Harriet Boyd Hawes was the first woman to discover and excavate a Minoan settlement on this island. Watson. What is Crete? Yes. Let's finish Chicks Dig Me. So, first rule is to protect our careers is we don't want to compete where we cannot win. <laughs> it's really important to not build your career based on doing things that can be automated away. For example, if I was, was going to want to work as an accountant, I, wouldn't, I would not work in accounts payable processing. It's all been automated. I would not want to build my skills around account reconciliations. It's all been automated. If I was a lawyer, right, I wouldn't want to build it around you know, doing contract due diligence. It's already been automated. So it's really important that we think about this. And this list that you can see on screen, all of these things can be done better by the bots, by algorithms and technology than humans. Now, you might raise your eyebrows at the last one here, detect honesty and emulate empathy. Now, notice I said emulate. <laughs> uh, a bot will never have genuine empathy, but, but a computer can tell whether someone's telling the truth better than a human already today. So there'll never be real empathy, but it can certainly detect honesty. Uh, and, and there's an amazing example of a New Zealand company called Soul Machines. Uh, and again, we'll provide the links and in the recording, we'll try and provide the video as well. Uh, Soul Machines, uh, about four years ago at a conference, uh, they had the presenter on stage walk up to a, to a computer screen and you can see the screenshot of it here. So this is Rachel, their AI salesperson and the person's on stage looking at their laptop in the black and white thumbnail you can see there, and he's talking to Rachel uh, about buying a credit card. And Rachel goes through all of the discovery questions about what credit card would be best for him, and then figures out exactly which one is best, you know, ba based on his credit score, based on the type of card that he wants for points, based on the fact he pays down his balance every month to zero. Uh, it's a bit hard to see, but above his thumbnail, you can see those lines above there. Uh, through the laptop camera, Rachel, with her AI, uh, is analyzing his body language, his facial expressions, his intonation of voice. So when he says, really, she knows whether that's a skeptical really, and I'm interested really, <laughs> and she knows exactly how to respond. Good morning. Hi there. I'm Rachel. Hi, Rachel. I'm Sean's new. How's it going? I'm doing well. Thank you. I'm really excited to be here. This is my first time in New York City. Really? Where are you from? Um, have you ever heard of a place called the Internet? <laughs> I guess I spent some time there. Well, I've lived there all my life. I'm a creation of soul machines. I can see you and hear you. And what makes me different is that I can respond to your emotions. I guess you could say I'm putting a human face on artificial intelligence. Wow. So what brings you here? I am working with IBM Watson to deliver knowledge across a vast range of topics. My current interest is helping people find the best credit card for them. 
Really? I've actually been looking into credit cards recently. What a coincidence. Really? Yeah, but it's really overwhelming. You know, there's so many credit cards out there, so many offers, options. I don't really know what to do. Oh, Shantanu, I completely understand. It can be a lot to figure out. Would you like some help? Sure. Um, I'm looking for a card with no annual fee, a low APR, and something where I can get the maximum amount of points. OK, so you're looking for a points card. I can definitely help. Is this for personal or business use? Uh, personal use. And will it be your first card? Uh, no, I actually have a few. OK. Do you mind if I ask about your credit score? An estimate could help me narrow down the options for you. Uh, well, I'm at this audience, but it's 750. Just keep it between you and me. Excellent. You will have some good options. Since you said you're looking for a low APR, does that mean you typically carry a balance or that you pay it off every month? I really try to pay it off every month. All right. I have the perfect card in mind for you. It has no annual fee, an APR of 6.5%, and it comes with triple points on all purchases. Oh. How does that sound? Mm, sounds nice. How do I get started? Wonderful. I can transfer you to an agent to complete the application. Would you like to do that now? Yes, please. Before I do, is there anything else I can help you with, Shantanu? No, you've been great. Thanks so much. I'm so glad to hear that. If you know of anyone else who needs help with this stuff, feel free to send them my way. Have a great day. You too. Goodbye. So let's jump into um, what do we do about all of this? I think we can see that these trends are real. So these were the top five uh, predictions for B2B outbound. Uh, Justin and I made 20. This is really my 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 top five pick. So I think, you know, right now there's going to be the rise of revenue operations that bring sales, marketing and omni-channel customer experience together, right? Finally bringing sales, marketing, and then all the subsets of sales, inside and outside sales, sales operations, bringing it all together, uh, starting to use technology like sales engagement platforms, which is a new category uh, of technology. So basically, it enables you to design and execute your sequences uh, of outbound. So phone, voice, phone, email, text message, LinkedIn. Now, not all of it can be automated, but it builds you your online playbook for how you do your sequences. You load all of your messaging in. Uh, it helps with the cadencing. So basically, the rhythm, the spacing at which you drive these sequences out to people. Uh, and the holy grail of, of sales engagement platforms, that's what SEP stands for, sales engagement platform. The holy grail of this is, uh, is basically a thing called liquid syntax, which is a way of injecting personalization. So going and finding relevant attributes about the person you're running outreach to uh, and making sure that you show them that you know them, that you're relevant to them, uh, uh, because that's incredibly important. Buyers today, uh, are getting bombarded and they expect us uh, to make sure that we're relevant to them when we drive outreach. So the rise of RevOps, the rise of sales engagement platforms. Uh, and then this one uh, is, is, is pretty out there. Uh, SDR X Machina will happen by 2025. It really will. Um, Justin Michael, the co-author of Tech Powered Sales, uh, was basically the the brain that a company tried to model this on and they had to go building it and came relatively close. Uh, they had amazing success and were acquired. Um, but that's why Justin has such incredible insights into what's going on with this area of automation. Uh, but the ability for a bot to run outreach and it passes the Turing test and create a qualified lead or to get a person to then become inbound and self-serve, purchase and onboard themselves, all of the text here, it just has to get refined. Um, and it's much closer than we think. You know, we know with Amara's law that, you know, we tend to overestimate what technology will do in the short term and we underestimate 
the power of it in the long term. Uh, but this one's very real. Uh, and that has big implications on sales roles. Uh, based on a lot of this, you know, there'll be 33% less field sellers. And I just challenge everybody based on that story I shared earlier. Don't delude yourself into thinking, well, you know, but I build relationships. Well, are relationships the thing that people really want? I know for myself, I've got 21 and a half thousand unread emails in my inbox. I've got 340,000 followers in LinkedIn. I drown. I, I just drown in people contacting me, wanting, wanting things, trying to sell to me. You know, I don't want another relationship in my life with a seller. I just don't. I want re relationships with my inner circle of uh, my family and friends and, and some of my very close friends in business. So we, we can't just depend on a relationship. Um, and the other thing, the big trend is going to be uh, digital virtual assistants becoming real. And I'll talk about what that could look like. And in, in the book, we've, we've got a chapter in the book called A Day in the Future. <laughs> uh, and it talks about how this could potentially work for somebody. And the punchline in the story in the book is that everything you just read is actually here today. What's not here today is the orchestration of all of those pieces. Um, so let's talk about Steve, Sales Team Enablement Virtual Entity. Uh, it's an acronym that I made up. Um, but let, let's think about what your sales virtual assistant could potentially do. And this is the thing that would give you back time. Uh, it could absolutely be creating lists of people for you to be targeting based on your ideal customer profile and triggers. Uh, and there's tech out there that does that today, that there's this company called trigger.ai. Uh, if you think about things like Sales Navigator uh, and LinkedIn Insights, which is a new product that they've launched, you know, those things can help you uh, if, you, if you know your ICP, can help you create lists of people you should be targeting. Um, referrals and personalization, uh, that's absolutely something that can be automated. In that example of Rachel that sells the credit card live on stage, at the end of it, she asks for a referral. Uh, it's amazing how many sellers actually forget to do that. Uh, it can author and send emails. Now, Justin Michael shared this with me last week. Um, this email here, and it's we've obviously... Uh, uh, hidden the, the individual person's name, but you know, hey, Mike, your profile looks very impressive. It's great that you've given back to the community along with your professional achievements, like volunteering at Rock Up and Sing Choir. Um, would love to connect. That email was generated by a bot. Um, now, this is a, a very controversial thing to let you know, uh, and LinkedIn are always trying to block them and it's against their, their policies. Uh, but there absolutely are automated bots inside environments like LinkedIn. Uh, there's automated bots everywhere. Uh, uh, and there's, there's technology. GPT-3, for example, is a technology that can author emails. It can write poetry and songs. It's incredible where all this technology is going. The scary thing is so many sellers just can't seem to write. Um, so again, you know, if you want to future-proof your career in a digital world, I'd, I'd learn how to become a really good creative writer. Uh, we've got this technology that can dial and screen pop. And you know, we talked about connect and sell being able to do that for you for live calls. We've got technology that can, that can watch a call. A lot of the meetings today you know, are, are like this. They're on the end of a computer. I know a long time ago, there was, there was all of the furor around you know, Google Glass. You could wear these geeky glasses that had cameras in them and a little display. Well, who needs that now that most meetings are online anyway? There'll be another screen beside your main screen with your AI virtual assistant, you know, prompting you about, about talk time, buying signals, the best reference customers to mention based on how the conversation's unfolding, right? So already their technology is here to, that they can actually do that. There's, there's coaching software. Uh, it can coordinate and schedule your calendar. It can phone people up and confirm the meetings. Um, uh, it can prompt you on risk and next best action. If you look at, for example, Einstein, within Salesforce as a CRM system. It can prompt on next actions. It can do the forecasting for you. Um, it, you know, we can automate so much of what we do. Uh, so all of this is coming. And what we need to do is figure out how do I create my own mashup of technology?